So by a quick show of hands, how many people here before they left for work or school this morning made a conscious effort to turn off all the TVs in their home? Okay, good, good portion of us. How about all of our fans, our ceiling fans, our floor fans, and what have you? How about our lights? Lights are a pretty easy one to catch. I want to program an AC to stay off during the day. Just a few of us, just a few energy nerds out there. It's nice to see you guys. Okay, now, by a show of hands, how many people here like to save money? Yeah, everybody's hands go up now. Of course, everyone likes to save money. But what if I told you I knew you were throwing away a pretty significant chunk of change at the end of each month? I'm sure you'd want to know how to get it back, and, well, that's exactly what we're going to do here today. Let me share with you the story of how I started to save a little bit of money and energy in my own home. You see, at the beginning of the year, I began this long, extensive research project, and the long and short of it is that I looked for ways to improve energy efficiency at the yacht club I worked at, and I learned and shared and discovered a lot about how we can achieve this goal through things like uh, smart building design and energy consolidation and what have you. And this project only just reached its, its conclusion a couple of weeks ago, but it, you see, it's woken this little passion in me, so I don't think it will ever be done. However, at the end of the project, I kind of had to have it pointed out to me, most people don't, in fact, own large luxury yachts, and so as great as all of these things that I had learned were, they didn't really resonate very well with a whole lot of people. And that really frustrated and dissatisfied me, but I knew that the principles of energy saving were fairly universal and that it just meant tailoring them to the right environment, like the homeowner. I'm a homeowner, or I should say my parents are homeowners, and they let me live there rent-free, and that's very nice of them. But, uh, but I wanted to save them a little bit of money by applying some of these things that I had learned. And so I went down to my local Walmart, where all great science experiments are set to begin, and I began to shop around for some things that I might be able to use around my own house. And I stumbled across this little thermal camera, so I went ahead and, and picked it up and brought it home. And I got really excited to use it, because that's the kind of things nerds get excited about. And, well, I plugged it into my phone and began to scan all the walls in my house, and I was seeing everything in infrared, and I kind of felt like Predator from Predator vs. Alien, but I was hunting energy savings instead of people, so that's pretty cool, I guess. And I got up to my bedroom with this thermal camera, and I found this little spot underneath my window, and it looked like it was slightly warmer than the rest. And I was like, I think I know what this means. And so I ran out of my room and down to my kitchen and out to my garage, and I grabbed a hammer, and with the back end of the hammer, I, so I didn't do too much damage, went back up to my room, and I just tapped a small hole right through my wall so I could figure out if I, if I knew what was going on. And lo and behold, it was exactly what I expected. When I reached my finger into that hole in the wall, it was completely empty. The insulation there had fallen down, leaving this void, and it was letting the heat enter the house and wasting energy. And so I run out of my room because I'm super excited about what I've just found out, and I meet my parents at the top of the stairs, who at this point have put together what they think I just did. And, well, to say the least, they weren't too amused with my little <laughs> home energy project. No worries, though, I've since patched the hole in the wall, so no harm, no foul. Uh, and as much as I wish I could tell each of you to go home today and do exactly as I did and take to your walls with hammers, it's sadly not the best way to go about beginning your little own home energy, energy improvement project, and it's certainly no way to get your parents on board if you're in the same boat as I am. Uh, but luckily, this thermal camera I bought is great at identifying a lot of other spots that we can improve in our homes, like our windows. A ton of heat escapes our homes through our windows, and thus a ton of energy escapes our homes through our windows, too. But it's very easy to get this energy back, actually. If you just go down to your local Home Depot or Lowe's or uh, Ace Hardware, you can find solar screens there for cheap, very cheap, like $25, $50, maybe $75 to rescreen your whole house cheap. And heck, to have a professional come in and do it for you is still only a few hundred dollars more, but doing this was part of my sister's fourth grade science fair experiment, so I have faith that all of you can do it yourself. And once you've installed these things, you can see just how effective they are. Well, they cool off the whole window now. The only part that heats up is the metal sill down at the bottom. The rest of the pane stays about three to four degrees cooler. Three to four degrees cooler. That might not sound like a whole lot, but in one year, that can save you about 900 kilowatt hours of electricity, and that's just at your home alone. At the energy plant where your power might be sourced from, it actually saves them from producing about 9,000 kilowatt hours of electricity. And that's just with one small project. You've already made quite a significant saving, so good job. But how much money did we save? I know that what, that's what everybody here is interested in. And, well, it's about $20 a month, $240 in a year, and that means in about 18 to 24 months, you've already paid off the full cost of materials and install if you chose to go that route. Even sooner than that, if you did it yourself, and, well, after that, it's just money back in your pocket. Y'all, it's just money back in your pocket. You're being paid by the environment to take care of it. Earth is beginning to give you an allowance for doing something good for it. Did that light bulb in your head about why doing small little things like this is such a good idea just turn on, because it certainly did for me. But our windows are just the start, and that's because when we build homes, we've become very good at designing them to be comfortable, pretty, and beautiful, but we're only just now getting good at designing them to be smart and efficient. 
consider that when a usable unit of energy arrives at your home, about 20% of it is going to be wasted right off the bat. And when you add on top of that the fact that for every 10 units of energy we produce, only one of them arrives at our house to begin with, and we can start to see why a focus on efficiency and smart design becomes very important. But then we go and do silly things like put our ACs in our attics. That's a thermal picture of my own attic. It's about 100 degrees up there right now, and we live in Houston, and it's only May, so we certainly know it's going to get hotter. But this is where we put the thing that we expect to distribute all of the cold air in our house. Yes, we put the thing that we expect to pump the cold air around our house in the hottest space of the house, but not only the hottest space of the house, also the poorest insulated. So poorly insulated, in fact, it's where 35% of heat energy, energy enters your home, and thus where about 35% of waste energy exits your home. So much waste energy, in fact, if you were to leave your front door wide open, you would waste about 15% less energy than your roof. So the next time your parents tell you to close the front door that you're letting all of the cold air out, tell them, no, I think our attic is. So what are we going to do about this? Well, obviously we can't go moving the AC out of the attic. That's just silly. And so the next best thing is to just go ahead and insulate the whole attic. And as expensive and extensive and daunting as that may sound, you can actually bring someone in to do this in an afternoon for just about $1,000. Or if you're like me and spraying that stuff on and watching it expand slowly out towards you sounds like a lot of fun, you'll just go ahead and do it yourself. Installing this new spray foam insulation can actually end up saving you just about as much energy as uh, installing an all-new high-efficiency system in your home for about half the cost and half the time to get your return on investment. But say you don't want to start with something so daunting. Well, while I was up there taking those other pictures, I just took a quick look around, and well, that's a couple of holes and a few loose fittings on my ducting. And so I walked out of my attic, back down my stairs, and this time before I could get to the garage, my dad stopped me and asked me what I was doing. I told him not to worry, I was going to be fixing things this time. He let me carry on, and so I went back up to my attic with a roll of duct tape and a couple of crescent wrenches, and I patched everything up and fixed a few holes and tightened a few fittings, and I was already on my way to saving some energy. But say you do go ahead and choose to insulate your whole attic, which I would recommend, well, you'll add an additional $400 on top of the $240 you've already saved from taking care of your windows, which is already over half a grand for just two small projects, and well, you've brought your total home energy savings up to 3,200 kilowatt hours already, which is a fairly significant portion of your home's annual energy usage to begin with, so good job. But it's not just our windows and our attics and our AC systems that are wasting our energy and robbing us blind. It's, well, we in fact have phantoms in our homes too, and they're also stealing our money and wasting our energy. The average U.S. household has 24 electronic devices plugged in at all times. Uh, and even when these devices are off or not in use, they actually still draw quite a significant electrical load. That's where the term phantom load comes from. Uh, I took a couple more pictures with that thermal camera of mine because it's kind of a great toy and I really enjoy using it. And you can see just how much heat these devices are using. That's a laptop charger and a cable box. And I wasn't using the, either of them at the time, but you can see how they light up the whole picture because of the amount of heat they are producing. In fact, even when these devices are off, they can still use about as much electricity as a 60-watt light bulb. You certainly wouldn't leave 24 60-watt light bulbs on in your house all day, and so it's silly that we consciously do it with these other things. So this problem is actually incredibly easy to fix, and that's why I want to end with it, because it's something that you can go home and do today. Go around your house and look for all the surge protectors and power strips that you might not be using, and go ahead and take them around to all the spots in your house where you have a lot of things plugged in, like your home office, your media center, your gaming station in your bedroom, your kitchen where your toaster and blender might be plugged into two different outlets, and just start to consolidate things a little bit. Uh, even if you only manage to catch about half of the devices in your home and, and get them on a shared power strip, you can still end up saving about another $60 to $80 every year and bring your total home energy savings up to 3,400 kilowatt hours. $720 in one year, that's some pretty nice round trip airfare to some pretty exotic locations in the, in the Bahamas. So if you start this today, by this time next year, you will have paid for your own vacation. And 3,400 kilowatt hours, that's kind of an intangible number, it's hard to think about. So what exactly does that mean? Well, if you save 3,400 kilowatt hours, you actually keep an energy plant, a coal plant, from burning 4,300 kilograms of coal. So in one household, with just three small projects, we keep 4,300 kilograms of coal from being burned and the gases from them from being released into our atmosphere. And so, ladies and gentlemen, that's why this becomes so important. Because one small change on our end of the line can make a tidal wave of difference down at the power plant where our energy is sourced from. And so I say to you today that we no longer are unaware of the change that needs to happen about the way in which we produce our energy. We are no longer uh, we no longer don't desire to make this change in the way in which we use our energy. In fact, after today, we are no longer unaware of the way in which we need to use our energy. 
And so I tell each of you, go home today and make these small changes. There are $40 billion worth of waste electricity each year in the United States alone, and we certainly didn't catch it all today. So please, make these small changes and help save the environment, because the choice is yours to make a meaningful and impactful difference about the way in which we use our energy. Thank you.